All right, animation. So we're gonna do two kinds of animation. One is controlled by hand, one is controlled by computer. Do, let's do the controlled by computer part first. So what happens here is I have hierarchy and I want to take all my joints and take those joints and turn them into a character. And that character is gonna be called Crane. Now the reason I do that is because I do not want to key every component. That would be a pain. So rather than key every component, turning it into a character will allow me to key the character and then all everything that falls under the character, which is all these bones, uh, will basically uh, animate based upon that. So you'll see how it goes. We got Crane 1 here. And I have 100 frames, so I typed in 100 and I went to 100. So what I want to do is make a self-test for the, the robot arm thing to actually turn on. When it turns on, it, it does this initialization phase. So it might do a test of several of the joints. It might do a firing thing. It might rotate around and then rotate back. That's the key. I want to make this into a loop. So since I'm not using tracks editor at all, if you're familiar with tracks editor, you would know that the S key is bad. So I'm not going to be using the tracks editor, so the S key is okay. And S key is set driven key. So uh, right now, by highlighting all these bones and going to one, I can hit S, and then I can go over here and hit S, and there we go. Now I have um, basically a phase at which this will loop. What happens in the middle here? Well, let's say at one point it rotates around. So I'm going to do that. Notice auto key is on. So this is what happens. Okay, good. And I would think that an initialization phase would start um, also by taking and maybe moving a few of the aspects around. Now I want that to look kind of cool because what will happen is if it's rotating like this and then rotating back, that's one animation. Now I would say add a few more frames. Since this is just going to be one big animation of initialization, uh, anything after the 100 frames should be stuff like maybe this tips back and forth. Okay, there we go. And then maybe back, down, up, and then back. Okay, so let's play that and see what it looks like. All right, now if we wanted to get everything back into a loop, what we, we could do here is add, oh, probably about 220. And then take this and copy it and paste it here. Okay, so there we go. Let's see what happens.
Very nice. So you should make loops when it comes to animation. They just turn out so much smoother, uh, if it, especially if it's at idle position. Now, a loop would be considered, you know, something like a walk cycle is a loop. This is a loop. You know, a thing that goes from an initialization stage of 0 to 220, and then if I wanted to play it again, it doesn't tweak. And if it doesn't loop correctly, it'll look like it's flickering at one point in the game. So you don't want that to happen. That's why loops are so important. All right, now that we have the animation sequence in there, it's a small, simple sequence, but keep it simple. Uh, what we want to do is export this selection, or export all. Let's export all to be safe, since this is the only thing in the scene. And for the export all, I want to put this within the OBJ directory. Let's see here. Junior shared community. And I'm going to add to my rotate tool. All right, now there's two things you have to know. FBX, FBX is the native format that handles animation. So if you found yourself a program that exports FBX, you'd be all set. Does it have to be FTX? Not sure about that. I've used Maya so long that I would say that the FBX, um, I think is also in 3D Studio Max, widget FBX. Now I labeled it widget FBX, period FBX. I do that because Unity will see the Maya file also. And here I want to bump this up to millimeters because I want the scale factor a little higher. And there we go. So now in the next uh, movie, what we're going to do is bring it into the engine and play around with the animations.